Hello, and welcome to Peacock Plays Android Netrunner. I'm Henry Branscombe. And I'm Ben Kahn. Alright, so we are at Forever Night Games in Olympia, Washington for their store championship on New Year's Day 2015. PAX Legal up through the source. This is the second game of round two. Taylor on the left and Ben himself on the right there. Taylor's doing Noise and Ben is doing an NEH Scorch variant. Yeah, so basically the influence spread here is, it's like astrobiotics, but instead of the biotics, I have scorches. And snares. And snares. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, why play NBN when you can pretend to play NBN and play Wayland instead? Yeah, I've said this in other videos, but this deck reminds me of Super Modernism, a beloved Wayland deck, deck of mine, and more than basically anything else on the field. So meanwhile, Taylor is playing a... Uh, a pretty standard noise it is uses cash, uses Aesops, uses Shahrazad uh, to uh, just make money installing viruses. So, how do you feel? Who do you think this matchup favors? I think normally, I don't know. Noise has some pretty good stuff against um, NEH. I feel like just with the ability to mill out and actually. I feel like can econ up pretty effectively with the right stuff, but knowing that you have scorches and snares and that he doesn't know that, I mean, a deep medium dig or a multi-access from hand or just keeping a tag that he thinks he can take because you're NEH could really just kill him. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's something Taylor uh, has cursed Ben out for previously because, well... Snare is scary. Yeah, so I don't know if the Scorch plan in a full information environment and gives me the advantage against or improves my matchup against noise, but I think definitely having in this here where it's ambiguous yeah. is, gives me a benefit. And I believe you'd held off on playing this deck to make sure that no one would really see this coming except for me because, you know, I know you. Yeah, so I practiced exclusively online with this deck in preparation for this tournament. Which I think might have been not as good a plan. I, I do think the supermodernism motto of showing you my deck and then winning anyways is a good one to follow. But I think even with uh, the hidden information certainly doesn't hurt. Yeah. Um, so at this point... Uh, you did bring a HB fast advanced deck last time. Yeah. So at this point I'm baiting a Siphon. Now, uh, the card that we couldn't see there was an Imp, as well as a Parasite and a Crypsis, is, and he draws the uh, uh, wild side here. Which, you know, means he'll be able to get out into play pretty quickly early on, which is not always... Yeah, Cyberfeeder nice comes down, Shahrazad comes down, and, and we get an Imp on Shahrazad. Uh, no, I believe that's a Cash. Oh, sorry, Cash on Shahrazad. Thank you. Ew, so that triggers a Mill. Ew, I res my pad campaign and get money. Corp draw happens. He's got wild side net at this point, so he's able to set up his draw engine. He's got the Shahrazad, he's got a cash already on the table. All he really needs at this point is the Aesops to have his econ set up pretty hard. Yeah. So I've got the new remote, ice over HQ. Always good to be safe. And then put in some money on marked accounts. As much as I feel like Noise has a lot of options to deal with that kind of uh, drip econ, um, when his econ is just getting set up, it could still hurt him a little bit to be dealing with it. Yeah, and basically any, for example, imp uses on my asset econ feels like a win for me because it's not going to a sand sand or a scorch. Yeah. And well, he doesn't know he needs to keep his money necessarily. Yeah. So we see him checking out HQ. And you're just going to let him right in. And he sees mid-seasons. So he probably knows something's up. Yes. He's <laughs> that is a pretty big hint. All right, so we see the imp. It looks like he's going to try to attack my combo. Which makes sense. So he wants to try and knock it down a little bit. And no, he kills the pad campaign. I can see that. Mid uh, blah. the other marked accounts takes a lot more of your own time investment. Pad campaign at that point just doesn't get you as much money. Yeah, so we see an install which winner. draws me a card. I ice up that uh, remote, and I play hedge fund. 
And while he's probably expecting Scorches at this point, knowing that you're you, and seeing the mid-seasons, yeah, that's there's fair. still a lot of stuff that could be there and could be needing to be dealt with. Yeah, we had also talked about experimenting with Shoot the Moon, so oh, that is another possibility yeah, that he could be thinking of. If, and I do want to make a Shoot the Moon deck at some point, but this is not it. <laughs> no. I feel like Shoot the Moon probably is better out of making news, even if yeah. NEH is better overall, just because of the direct connection with the ID. Yeah. Getting a mid-seasons of eight. So we see him go to hand again. Answer. Checks. Sees a toll booth. I'd probably consider imping that if I was him, and yeah, he Yeah, he imps it. That's just not a fun thing to have to deal with, especially for Anarch. Yeah, it gives me a chance to rush against him. Yeah. Goes to R&D, sees the pop-up. And I believe this is a C source on the top, which he now can't and to get rid of because he used his imp credit. Yeah. Or imp token. And at this point, he probably knows you're not doing Shoot the Moon, but the big fun, of course, is that he might not realize how many snares you're running. Yeah, so now he checks out at the remote. No res, sees a sand sand. Can't trash it. In my credit, turn. draw my card. See that C source. And. Well. Thinking for a second. Do you have enough? He doesn't have that many cards in hand. And he's dead. Yep. Pretty quick game. Alright. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for round three. Have a good one.